Christians, Jews, and people of conscience across the state to contact their elected leaders to support Israel's war on terror and to demand no ceasefire and no funding to Palestinians until the terrorist-led Palestinian Authority Hamas unity government is eliminated once and for all. If we do not defend Israel's right to defend herself by eliminating the terrorist infrastructure in her neighborhood, the Western world will be unable to eliminate the same in ours. Israel is fighting a war to defend not only itself, but freedom throughout the world. We're here together at the Tennessee State Capitol. Jews, Christians, together, people of good conscience, to raise our voices and to send a strong message to the state of Israel and the people of Israel that the citizens of Tennessee stand with you. People of conscience, Israel, have felt your pain these past weeks and months. We feel the pain of the bereaved families who've lost their sons and brothers in battle. We feel the pain of the injured Israeli soldiers of the Israel Defense Forces whose lives are changed forever. And we even feel the pain of the innocent Palestinian mothers, grandmothers, grandfathers, children who've lost their lives, who are being used as human shields by the Hamas terrorists who carry the entire blame for the loss of life these past weeks. Please sing with me. I'm Israel, I'm Israel, I'm Israel, hi. I'm Israel, I'm Israel, I'm Israel, hi. I'm Israel, I'm Israel, I'm Israel, hi. One of the greatest I'm words that we find in the Bible is in Genesis chapter 13, verse 15, where God says, For all of the land, Abraham, that you see, I give to you and to your descendants forever. So today, we stand to undergird the word of God that says and makes the case biblically that the Holy Land, Israel, is the land of the Jewish people. We believe in the freedom of Israel and the freedom of all people. But what we have discovered throughout the annals of history, whenever the state of Israel, the Jewish people are not free, it brings a form of bondage and oppression to all other people. In 1968, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King said that peace for Israel means security. And we must stand with all of our might to protect her right to exist. And finally, I want to raise the quote of the great President Ronald Reagan. In 1983, Ronald Reagan said, our friendship is based on historic morale and strategic ties, as well as our shared dedication to democracy. The reason why we stand for Israel is because it's the right thing to do for such a time as this. Now, Lori asked me to mention something to you that another way that you stand with Israel is not to let the students be taught with textbooks and let it go unchallenged that are anti-Semitic. Several of the people in the Tennessee found out that this was going on in one of the textbooks. They took umbrage at that, and that set off a chain of events where parents, and I've been trying to get parents involved in this for 20 years, started reviewing the textbooks. And as just as it so happened, the textbook commission, when approves all the textbooks that are being used in the Tennessee schools, was up for reauthorization. And so during this perfect storm, Lori Moore, Julie West, Barbara Sturgeon, Claudia Hennenberry, Hal Rounds, and Jackie Archer, and Lisa Moore were invited to make a presentation before the Senate Education Committee. And their professional presentations were so impressive to the committee members 
that an earthquake took place in terms of the textbook adoptions for the state of Tennessee. And because of the hard work of these people and a number of people across the state that turned in these evaluations of the textbooks and they found all kinds of things in them that were biased, there is now a law in Tennessee that totally changes the way that textbooks will be adopted. It changes the makeup of the commission it involves parents at every level. And so now we get to have more input in that. And not only that, the law says that the textbook have to reflect Tennessee values. So for this perfect storm, the seeds were planted that we saw an incredible harvest because people cared enough to get involved. And I just want to say, never pass up an opportunity to make your voice heard because you can make a difference. It only takes a handful of people. And look at all the people we've got here tonight. So on you who bless Israel, I bless you in the name of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Those of us who read Zechariah also believe the time is coming when all the nations of the world will turn against Jerusalem, but God will go forth to fight for her. Israel will endure. Israel will endure forever. I too pray in the name of Jesus, the Messiah, that you will continue to keep those iron domes going, knocking every rocket out of the sky. I pray that you will continue to destroy the tunnels, that you will continue. If the Hamas cannot turn to you, you will wipe them out because you said that you would wipe out all of Israel's enemies. And we thank you and pray that. Amen. Amen. The Jewish people and the people of the world have a living document called the Torah. This message God communicated thousands of years ago. Moses warned the Jews against a two-state solution for those that really want a one state, a state rid of the Jewish people. If you have people who respect you and appreciate you, you can live side by side in tranquility. But if you're dealing with people who believe that the Jewish people are the devil, if they are raising their children with the notion that Jews are the Satan and they, they are to be eradicated, then by having them near you, you are in a constant state of war. For the Arab objective has never been to establish the 22nd Arab state side by side with Israel, but to destroy the only Jewish state. Arab leaders always craved a Palestinian state that would extend from river to the sea, which is from the Jordan River to the to Mediterranean, which is all of Israel. It is their wish to annihilate the people of Israel and make it a one state, an Arab state. And as we see in 2005, every single Jew and every soldier left Gaza and allowed them to create their own state. And not one single day of peace has passed since then, for their yearning is not for statehood, but for the destruction of Israel. And it's now time to go back to the words of Moses 3,300 years ago, that you cannot appease terror. You must destroy it completely. Our connection to our land and the sense of moral justice for living and owning the land must be unwavering and unnegotiable for the creator of the world has given it to us as our country. He who blessed our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, may he bless the fighters of Israel's defense forces who stand guard over our land and the cities of our God from the borders of Lebanon to the deserts of Egypt and from the great sea until the approach of the Arava on land, in the air, and on sea. May the Almighty God cause the enemies who rise against us to be struck down before them. May the Holy One, blessed be He, preserve and rescue our fighters from every trouble and distress, and from every plague and illness, and may He send success to every their endeavor. May He lead our enemies under our soldiers' sway, and may God grant them salvation and crown them with victory. And may there be fulfilled for them the verse of the Bible, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you to battle your enemies for you and to save you. Now let us all respond as one. Amen. The mission of this movement, whether it be the Muslim Brotherhood or Hamas, is not the question of occupation. 
it is the issue of destruction. Their own charter, written by their own hand, declares their intention not simply to liquidate the Jewish state, but to murder every Jew in the world. My dear friends, the voice of God is here this afternoon. This is not just a gathering. It is not just a meeting. We have decided to come here and to stand up against this tyranny because it is a tyranny that is facing Israel. It is a tyranny that is facing the world. It is a tyranny that is facing the United States of America. It is a tyranny that we must stand up and we must resist. Amen. We declare today that Israel has a right to exist that Israel has a right to defend herself, <laughs> that Israel has the high moral ground in this conflict, <laughs> that Israel's capital is the undivided, eternal city of Jerusalem. <laughs> we determine that we will stand with Israel, we will walk with Israel, and we'll link hands with the Jewish community, and we'll say, we are with you. Israel is not in the plan of God. Israel is the plan of God. Now, to my Jewish brothers, why Christians? Our Bible commands us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem and to bless Israel. But if any of you are just reading emails and yelling at the television, I urge you to get behind Lori Moore and proclaiming justice to the nations. I urge you to get behind Christians United for Israel. Join up. Invest your time, invest your dollars in God's eternal business. Now, this is not a peace rally. There is room here, though, for all people who support Israel. See, our catchphrase at Congregation Micah comes right from the, the Tanakh, the Holy Scriptures. We do justly. We love. We literally seek out mercy and compassion. And we walk humbly, proclaiming justice. Our people know terror and recognize what it feels like to know the world doesn't care and is silent, that our hearts are always awake as Jews to human suffering. So as we all stand here this evening in support of Israel, in this Hebrew month of Av, this holy time on the Jewish calendar that we dedicate to the memory of destruction, destruction of the temple, when nearly one million Jews were killed and the rest sent into exile. O say shalom bin Romav, may that high and holy one allow peace from above, who ya say shalom aleinu, to, to rain down upon us, the al kol Yisrael and all Israel, the al kol Yoshve Tevel, and all of us who inhabit the earth, the Imaru, and together we end with the Hebrew word I know you know, and the word is Amen. As followers of the God of Israel, we must stand with Israel. I've read the Bible a few times. And from Genesis through Revelation, it's a story of God's people. And their name is Israel. And I stand with them because in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 18, it says, If you are in Messiah, then you are fellow citizens of the commonwealth of Israel, brought nigh and near and dear to your brothers in Israel. So I choose to stand with Israel. Let's tell the world. Let's proclaim it to the nations. When we start talking, we send waves, and it begins to spread throughout the world. Will you stand with me? Stand with Israel. Stand with Israel. Stand with Israel. Shalom. We cannot and should not remain silent in expressing our outrage about the use by Hamas of their own Palestinian people as human shields. No moral equivalence can be drawn between Hamas and Israel when Hamas celebrates death and killing 
and Israel mourns each death on both sides. We should be asking our government why we give these murderers any funding. I'd like to take a moment to not so humbly disagree with our president, who said that we are a nation born of all religions. No, sir. No, sir. We are a Judeo-Christian nation. I know where everyone stands that is here tonight, both literally and in spirit. But let's make sure that the media, the administration, and the ring of enemies that all but surrounds the first, the best light of the world knows it as well. We stand with Israel. I'm here representing the Israelis in town, and hopefully I'll do it good. As Prime Minister Benjamin Bibi Netanyahu said, we use our missiles to protect our people, and they use their people to protect their missiles. And it's as simple as that. Approximately 260 rockets were fired from educational facilities, schools, 160 launch from religious sites, mosques. Is this an enemy that is concerned for human life of its own citizens? A simple question, yes or no? Let me be clear, this is a battle between good and evil. We are dealing with people who steal body parts in order to will and deal those body parts. We are talking about people who after 9-11 came out to the streets, celebrated and handed out candy. Together, only together, we will rally the world to understand, recognize, and fight the evil which is growing among us. As George W. Bush said, when he addressed Congress after 9-11, we will not waver, we will not tire, we will not falter, and we will not fail. Peace and freedom will prevail. We Israelis said yes to peace, stop to war. We don't want war, we want to live in peace. I appreciate the support of everyone, everybody that came here and the American people that support Israel. Thank you very much. I lived in Israel for uh, over a year and worked at Yad Vashem, the Holocaust Museum. I never met one single Jewish person at Yad Vashem who hated Palestinians, who hated Arabs. I never met one who wouldn't do anything for peace, more than I would have done for peace. Israel is a country that desperately wants peace and is willing to do whatever it takes. Israel has to stop what's happening. They had no choice. The enemy must stop. We must stand with Israel. Now we have to go out and we've got to do the work. Tomorrow, please contact your elected officials and ask them to stop funding the Palestinian Authority Hamas Unity Government. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. I have one message for the Prime Minister of Israel. We support you, Bibi, and this time, finish the job. In Deuteronomy chapter 20, verses one through four, the Lord said, do not fear or panic or be in dread of them. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to give you the victory. Yeah.